All right, in this video, we're going to be looking at photosynthesis. We're going to split photosynthesis uh, into th two videos because it's quite a bit of info. And the first video, we're going to be pretty general. And then in the next video, we'll be a little more specific with things. Um, if you've learned photosynthesis before, this is going to be a much more general overview. There's not going to be a whole lot of specifics, mainly just understanding the energy transfers that take place and how that occurs. So again, um, with photosynthesis, it has to do with the idea of energy storage. Organisms are able to capture and store energy and use that energy for biological processes. Here you have the um, chemical equation for photosynthesis. You have carbon and water, um, and they make glucose and oxygen. Oxygen is a byproduct of this uh, reaction. Glucose is the main idea here. And this happens with the input of solar energy. The idea is that solar energy is converted into chemical energy in the form of glucose. This process is called, uh, with carbon you being used, it's called carbon fixation, which we'll get to in a moment. But um, one of the things, too, to, to talk about here is the fact that um, prokaryotic um, organisms... The first prokaryotic organisms that were able to do photosynthesis, there's evidence that supports that they are the reason that oxygen is, is currently in the atmosphere. Because oxygen is given off in this process, oxygen filled up the atmosphere over the course of long, long time of little things doing photosynthesis. And then um, organisms came about that were able to use that oxygen like ourselves. And so that is kind of how that worked. Um, a little bit of the overview of photosynthesis, there's two main reactions that are going on. On the you have, you have the light dependent reactions that are on the left there, and you have the Calvin cycle there on the right. You can see the sun's input going into that. I'm not exactly sure what the penguin is doing in the bottom left, but there it is. Um, and so in the light dependent reaction, you have a series of pathways that are involved in this process. And the main idea there is that water is input into the system and through water and sun we get these two molecules ATP which we spent some time talking about and then NADPH which is called an electron carrier. Electron carrier is able to carry high energy electrons and kind of drop them off in another place. Think about a mail carrier picking up and dropping things off also. So NADPH serves that role picking up those electrons that are made in one place and dropping them off in another. Get a little more in depth here. Um, there's our O2 in the atmosphere picture. Not sure what I was thinking here. So there's a picture of that. Um, yeah, there you go. All right, so here's the um, photosynthesis pathways again. Just to show you light-dependent reaction, Calvin cycle, the two main reactions occurring in photosynthesis you have. Um, NADPH and ATP being made and they're sent to the Calvin cycle and notice what's happening to those two molecules they're being used up this NADP plus represents after this electron carrier is dropped off its electrons ADP plus phosphate just means that those two things have been used or ADP it represents the phosphate being used and it has to be put back on through an input of energy remember that energy coupling that we talked about last time so here's a little bit bigger picture of the light dependent reaction you have a couple things here just to note these two this ps2 and ps1 these are called photosystems photosystems are just groups of pigments and these pigments are absorb light and transform that light into chemical energy and that chemical energy is temporarily stored in these electron carriers you can kind of see here Water is actually split. We would call that specifically the hydrolysis of water. And part of water is just a couple of electrons. Well, oxygen is given off here as the byproduct, and these hydrogen ions are part of the hydrogens here. And the other part of the hydrogens are these electrons. And these electrons are basically going to move through this little system here, which is called the electron transport chain, and move along this little system until it is they are picked up by NADP plus and it becomes NADPH and so you can kind of think about um, NADPH again is just carrying those high energy electrons where they get their energy from the sun here and they're going to go put them into the Calvin cycle another thing that occurs here is these hydrogen ions that are being made 
through this hydrolysis of water are being pumped into the interior of the thylakoid. And inside the thylakoid, you have a, a pressure gradient building up. And this pressure gradient building up causes um, there to be high concentration on the inside, low concentration on the outside, and thus then will cause facilitated diffusion through this protein called ATP synthase. And ATP synthase will kind of spin around, literally, and this creates, this allows for the creation of ATP. We'll get a little bit more into this in the next video, but this process is called chemiosmosis, which is uh, just this using a concentration gradient to create ATP. And so in this, this NADPH and this ATP represent energy from the sun, and then they will take that energy and put it into the Calvin cycle, which is what you see here. Calvin cycle um, is where carbon fixation occurs. The way, the best way to think about carbon fixation is what we use the word fix for. We take something that is not usable and we make it usable. And so CO2 is not usable by living things because it is poisonous to many living things except for plants. Plants can use it. And they do this process called carbon fixation where they take the unusable carbon and make it into something usable. Protein here, Rubisco, is the enzyme that facilitates that. And you can see here, ATP and NADPH are used in this reaction to make this high energy molecule called G3P, which will be converted into a glucose.